how to choose the right CPU in 2023. If you're trying to build a PC for the first time in 2023 and you found yourself overwhelmed by all the CPUs available right now, you're not alone. At the end of this video, you'll be able to choose the right processor for your needs and pair it with a compatible motherboard without any hesitation whatsoever. Let's get started. First of all, we need to understand that there are only two CPU producers. AMD, who makes Ryzen processors, and Intel. Both AMD and Intel produce four main lineups of products. AMD, the Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and Ryzen 9, while Intel has the i3, i5, i7, and i9. The numbers represent different performance tiers, with 3 being entry-level, 5 being mid-range, and 7 being high-end, and 9 being enthusiast level and prosumers. A i3 and Ryzen 3 are great CPUs if you're mainly going to use your PC for light office use or light 1080p gaming, but I wouldn't go farther than that. Before moving along, we need to talk about generations of processors though. And you can think about them just like the iPhone generations. It's a simplification, but the parallelism works. Newer generations have more advanced technology and better performance, generally speaking. Ryzen has six generations of desktop CPUs. One, two, three, four, five, and seven. Why not six? We don't know. Even though I would only recommend the 5th and 7th generations of Ryzen as the older generations are not nearly as performant as the newer ones. How can you tell which CPU generation you're about to buy? The first number after the Ryzen, for example Ryzen 5 5600. The first digit after Ryzen 5 indicates the generation. Similarly to AMD, Intel has the same naming but we're currently at the 13th generation. I would recommend considering the 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th generations of Intel CPUs. If you've understood how AMD names the CPUs based on the generation, you can tell which generation is the i7-11700. Eleventh gen, exactly. Makes sense till this point. Right? If we come back to the Ryzen 3 and i3 for a moment, let's dive deep into the models, because there's more than one for each CPU. We have the Ryzen 3 5100, the 5 stands for the 5th generation, while 100 means it's the base model. Then we have the 5300. What's the difference? Usually the base and turbo clock are slightly higher as the model number gets higher, which means generally more performance. The i3 can be found as a i3 12100 or 12300. The same difference as the Ryzen processors. A higher model number indicates better performance. You could also find a letter after the model. For Ryzen, G or X. G stands for integrated graphics, while the X means overclockable. Overclocking is something you do to extract a little bit more of performances, but you usually consume more power and you get higher temperatures. For Intel, you can find an F standing for the lack of integrated graphics, or K, which means it's overclockable. Are you still paying attention? Great, since from now on everything gets easier. So relax and enjoy. Let's now talk about the Ryzen 5 and i5. Great for like 70% of the users, a killer office machine and amazing for gaming at 1080p and 1440p. This is probably what you should aim toward. You can find the Ryzen 5 5500 and 5600. Similar to the Ryzen 3, the main differences are the clock speed and core count, with the 5600 being faster. The Intel counterparts are the i5-11400 and the 11600, again, with the higher model number indicating better performance. We then have the Ryzen 7 5700 and 5800, with not only a difference in clock, but even a difference in core count obviously in favor of the 5800. The Intel counterpart are the i7-11700 and the 11700. We only find one model for the i7, with of course the K overclockable, F lack of integrated graphics and KF versions, which lacks integrated graphics and is overclockable. Both the Ryzen 7 and i7 lineups are great for a workstation and high resolution gaming. If you want your system to last for a pretty long time, 
Even if you're going to use the PC for lighter use, this could be a great CPU to future-proof your machine. Lastly, we have the Ryzen 9 5900X and 5950X, with not only a difference in clock, but an even bigger difference of 4 cores and 8 threads, obviously in favor of the 5950X. Intel has the i9-11900 alone, and once again, only one CPU model. These CPUs are great for pro users, if you need to work with, let's say, After Effects or Heavy Premiere Pro video editing, or if you want to play in 4K with no compromises whatsoever. Congrats, you can now identify every CPU and you understand which is the best for your needs. But what about compatible motherboards? For AMD, we have three series of motherboards. A, the generation number 20, entry-level motherboards. I would only recommend this if you're going to use a Ryzen 3. Then we have B, generation number 50, ideal for Ryzen 5 and if you're on a tight budget, Ryzen 7. And then the X, generation number 70 perfect for ryzen 7 and 9 these are three generations of am4 motherboards and we have the third fourth and fifth generation you can check this compatibility chart over here for more info for seventh generation ryzen processors the naming is the same but you have a different socket the am5 and the generation number is 6. For Intel CPUs, we have two different sockets as well between the 10th and 13th generations. If you have a 10th or 11th gen Intel CPU, you will be looking for the LGA 1200 socket. Here we have three categories as well. H, generation number 10, B, generation number 60, and Z, generation number 90. You'll need to buy either the 4th or 5th gen of Intel motherboards. The differences are the same as AMD with H entry level, B medium and Z top of the line. For the 12th and 13th generations you need an LGA 700 motherboard and the motherboard generations are the 6th and 7th. Here you will find also some motherboards compatible with DDR4 memory and DDR5 memory. DDR4 a little bit slower but more affordable while DDR5 much faster but more expensive. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like a more in-depth video about motherboards and thank you so much for sticking until the end of the video. Remember to leave a like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you won't miss any future video like this one. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!